Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a drama film from 2018, titled Lady J. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In France in 1789, Madame de la Pommeraye is a young widow that doesn't believe in love and thinks married life is not for her. She only believes in friendship, and friendships go sour when you mix them with the pleasures of the flesh. This isn't enough to stop Marquis de Arcus, who wishes to court Pomeray and is staying in her estate until she accepts to be his. Arcus is a well-known womanizer and Pomeray knows this, which is why she doesn't believe him when he says she's his actual true love instead of just another passing fling like other lovers from the past. Pomeray is also visited often by her best friend Lucienne, who brings her all the gossip from the city. Lucienne is worried about Pomeray because she thinks Arcus is slowly changing into a better man, and Lucienne thinks a man like him will adopt any costume to get what he wants. Pomeray tells her not to worry, promising she isn't naive. However, the more days she spends with him, the more Pomeray finds herself enjoying Arcus' company and his philosophical talks. One afternoon, she finally gives in and accepts his advances, thus the two of them become a happy couple living on Pomeray's estate. When Lucienne visits again, she is nervous about this turn of events, but stays respectful for the sake of her friend's happiness. Pomeray still wants to know what people are saying about them though, so Lucienne explains people are placing bets on how long it will take them to break up. In other news, Lucienne also tells her about Madame de Jonquieres, who has been tricked by a duke into a fake marriage and now she's broke, both she and her illegitimate teenage daughter had to join a body house to survive. Two years pass of Pomeray and Arcus living happily together, although they haven't gotten married yet even if Pomeray brings the subject up every now and then. One day, Arcus tells Pomeray that he needs to leave for Paris to take care of some very important business, and Pomeray doesn't mind because it's only for a few days. However when Arcus comes back, he tells her about plans to do some big constructions in the city, which will take a big chunk of his time. Since then, Arcus begins neglecting Pomeray, spending most of his days in Paris, and whenever he comes back, ignoring her in favor of keeping his attention on blueprints and chats with an architect. The next time Lucienne visits and hears about Arcus' projects, she once again worries about Pomeray being stuck with a libertine that doesn't appreciate her. Pomeray swears everything is fine, but when Lucienne apologizes for doubting her relationship, Pomeray feels guilty for lying and confesses how Arcus has been neglecting her. Lucienne isn't surprised to hear this because passions always die after a while, but she gives her friend an important piece of advice, if she wants to know the truth, she needs to talk to Arcus. Later, Pomeray approaches Arcus and tells him that she feels there isn't love or passion between them anymore, expecting Arcus to deny it and tell her they're just going through a rough patch. However her plan backfires, Arcus confesses he agrees and he's been feeling like that for a while, he just had been scared to bring the subject up. In his opinion, the best course of action would be to go back to being just friends, and Pomeray agrees with fake determination. But afterward, she cries her heart out while Lucienne comforts her. As days pass, loneliness makes Pomeray's heart grow bitter, and she decides to get revenge on Arcus with a very cunning plan. Remembering the story Lucienne had told her, Pomeray sends her servants to pick up Madame de Jonquière and her daughter Mademoiselle de Jonquières, whose beauty is striking and that makes her perfect for the plan. Pomeray promises to reward them handsomely if they help her get revenge on Arcus, and they agree. The first step is to get the women out of the body house, meaning Pomeray rents them an apartment to live in. She also gets them fancy clothes to pretend they're still nobles and gives them a few months to adapt before putting the plan into action. When enough time passes, Pomeray goes out for a walk with Arcus in the park, where the Jonquieres women are also walking by while dressed in black like devout Catholics. Pomeray pretends to be surprised they're there and invites them to walk with them chatting with the mother while the daughter silently walks next to Arcus, who can't get his eyes off her. The Jonquieres soon need to leave for mass, and as soon as they're gone, Arcus asks Pomeray about them, proving he's bitten the bait. Pomeray explains the problems they got into after a duke tricked them, but omits the detail about their courtesan work. Arcus can't believe someone as beautiful as the daughter couldn't find a good husband, so Pomeray tells him they believe honorable modesty is better than marrying for money. This leaves Arcus with a want for the forbidden, and for the next few days, he's obsessed with finding the Jonquieres ladies again, going as far as stopping random women in the park and finally ignoring his projects. Desperate, he ends up going to beg Pomeray for help, asking her to invite the Jonquieres for dinner, but Pomeray pretends she's tried and she's been turned down. Not willing to give up, Arcus confesses that during the walk in the park, he and the Jonquieres' daughter share a few looks, making a connection. Pomeray pretends not to believe him and reminds him devoted Catholics like them will never look at him twice, making Arcus want what he cannot have even more. Later, when Pomeray shares her plan with Lucienne, she is proud to make fun of Arcus because he comes every day to ask if she's heard anything from the Jonquieres. However, Lucienne thinks she's going too far over a heartbreak. Meanwhile, Arcus invites his old lovers to spend his time with them as a distraction, yet he can't bring himself to be with them because his mind can only think of Mademoiselle de Jonquieres. 
Weeks pass with Arca staying inside in a depressed state, and as soon as Pomeray comes to visit him, he begs for at least a portrait of Mademoiselle de Jonquière so he can have more than a mere haunting memory. Pomeray pretends to finally feel pity for him and arranges a dinner with both Jonquière's ladies and Arcus, who shows up with humble manners. However, Pomeray puts him on the spot by saying she's been discussing philosophy with the Jonquières and they'd like his opinion as well. Arcus actually doesn't know that much about philosophy, he's only learned a few quotes to impress women, but he manages to put together some weird ideas about passion that Mademoiselle de Jonquières pretends to be impressed by. After dinner, Pomeray takes the mother into another room to lend her some books, leaving Arcus and Mademoiselle de Jonquières alone on purpose. Arcus tries some more cheap philosophy on her, and Mademoiselle de Jonquières accepts it with only a word or two. After such a meeting, Arcus is even more determined to have Mademoiselle de Jonquières, so he hires a bunch of men to find her. These men search the entire town for the Jonquières ladies and when one of them finds them in church, Arcus hires an artist to sketch the daughter while she's praying. He also waits outside the church until mass is done to follow the ladies to their house and learn their address. Then, he begins appearing in the area often, pretending to bump into them in the street by accident, but the ladies ignore him every time. Eventually, Arcus decides to pay off the priest so he'll give Mademoiselle de Jonquières a letter from him under the excuse that she needs an honest man to protect her from the devil's temptations. When the ladies get the letter, they take it to Pomeray, who gets upset when she reads those heartfelt love declarations and throws the letter away. At least the plan is going well, and she orders the ladies to keep going to church, telling the priest the mother burned the letter without reading it. When hearing about this, Arcus gets even more desperate and asks Pomeray for help again, but she says no reminding her that he can't have Mademoiselle de Jonquières just to fan the flames. Arcus decides to pay the ladies a visit in order to apologize for the inappropriate letter and give them two gifts, an envelope with money and a diamond necklace. Madame de Jonquières wants to accept the necklace since it could save her and her daughter's financial situation. But when she shows it to Pomeray, she orders her to turn it down because they can still get more out of this. She also makes Madame de Jonquières write a letter that Pomeray later gives Arcus and the ladies' names, telling him they had been very offended by his gesture and pretending to be mad at him for stalking them. Arcus begs for forgiveness on his knees, but Pomeray refuses to help him again, thus Arcus decides to try with a bigger gift. The next time he visits the Jonquières, he brings even more money, the promise of two houses, and an entire set of diamonds. Madame de Jonquières is in tears when she brings all this to Pomeray, begging to be allowed to accept such amazing gifts, but Pomeray just makes her write another rejection letter. She swears there's a bigger reward to catch and they need to be patient, although Madame de Jonquières can't understand how the offerings can get any better. After giving Arcus the letter, which breaks his heart, Pomeray meets with Lucienne, who thinks Pomeray is starting to push Arcus into madness. However, Pomeray thinks she isn't quite done yet. Three weeks later, a desperate Arcus approaches Pomeray to tell her he's willing to marry Mademoiselle de Jonquières if that's what it takes and he needs Pomeray to help him with the negotiations. Pomeray pretends to show concern for him since he's never shown interest in marriage, but Arcus is determined. The plan is successful, and Arcus and Mademoiselle de Jonquières get engaged. The mother is incredibly happy, thinking Pomeray was right, waiting did give them the biggest reward. The daughter however isn't comfortable with the idea of marrying a tricked man that doesn't know her full past. She can't get out of this plan without getting in trouble though, and the wedding goes without a hitch. After the ceremony, the mother gives Mademoiselle de Jonquières a little bottle of blood to put on the sheet so Arcus believes this to be his wife's first time. Such a simple gesture makes the daughter cry, thinking this may be a punishment from God for having pretended they were his followers and entering church after having worked as courtesans. However, during their wedding night, Arcus notices how tense Mademoiselle de Jonquières is. Thinking she is afraid of having her first time, he promises to wait patiently until she's ready for him. Sometime later, Pomeray invites Arcus and the Jonquières to go for a ride, but instead of taking the carriage through the park as promised, they go to the local body house. There, Pomeray reveals to Arcus the truth, his wife and mother-in-law had worked as courtesans in this place. The mother has a breakdown, but Mademoiselle de Jonquières is tired of lying and tells Arcus that it's all true. Pomeray confesses as well, laughing hard while explaining it had all been a trick, causing Arcus to run away. Mademoiselle de Jonquières tries to go after him but he pushes her away, asking her not to speak or touch him again if she doesn't want consequences. Meanwhile, the mother asks Pomeray why she's betrayed them, threatening her with a broken bottle when Pomeray says not to worry because she'll pay them as promised. She doesn't understand that she's ruined two ladies' reputations, and now they'll never be able to return to noble life again. When night falls, Arcus walks the city streets while having to endure other lords and ladies' mockery over Pomeray's trick. When he returns home, he finds lots of people at the door. It turns out they found his wife in the river, where she jumped to end things, thus they rescued her and brought her over. 
Arcus gives them some money as a reward to get rid of them then looks at Mademoiselle de Jonquieres, deciding to leave her on the entrance floor and go on with his life. She's still the Lord's wife though, and the servants bring her inside. When some hours later, Mademoiselle de Jonquieres finally wakes up, she tries to run away, but the servants stop her and take her to see Arcus, who has some things to say. His honor doesn't allow him to ignore his family, even if they've brought him shame, which means he'll allow them to keep his name and give them a house away from this mansion. He takes back all the bad things he said about Mademoiselle de Jonquieres because he's had time to calm down and now he understands she's just a pawn in an evil woman's trick, so he wants her to have freedom. However, Mademoiselle de Jonquieres asks for at least the darkest corner in the house that a wife could have in order to redeem herself and show him how much she hated lying to him. Arcus can tell how honest she's being and forgives her for everything before accepting to keep her as his wife. Some days later, Lucienne is in the city when he sees Arcus and Mademoiselle de Jonquieres going away on a trip. Arcus explains to her that they're leaving to the countryside until all the gossip dies down, and in return, Lucienne swears she hadn't been involved in Pomeray's tricks. Arcus believes her because he knows what his ex is like and asks Lucienne to tell Pomeray that is grateful for those tricks because they've introduced him to his beloved wife. Afterward, Lucienne visits Pomeray and tells her about the latest stories of the city, including having bumped into Arcus. However, she doesn't pass on the message and lies, saying she saw him alone. Pomeray believes her and says that even if Arcus hadn't been alone, she wouldn't have cared because she's at peace, but the pain on her features shows how she's lying as well. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.